Hello everyone and welcome to the introduction to business statistics. What if I will ask you to describe the numbers on the board? Notice that these numbers are just random and could mean anything, right? But if we are trying to get a meaningful information out of these numbers, it would still be possible if we use statistics. Statistics is a branch of mathematics that deals with the scientific collection, organization, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of numerical data in order to obtain useful and meaningful information. Like I said, statistics would help us transform numbers into something that makes sense, which can be used every day to describe or analyze the world we live in. Why do students need to study statistics? What if you are searching something in the internet and you stumble to something like this, and this, and this, and this? As a student, you must be able to read and understand the various statistical studies performed in different fields. To have this understanding, you must be knowledgeable about the vocabulary, symbols, concepts, and statistical procedures used in these fields. You must be able to interpret statistical tables, charts, and other research findings. And also, you need to know how to summarize and transform data into manageable proportions to draw conclusions. Speaking of which, statistics is a very useful subject. In fact, it's one of the few branches of math that has a separate bachelor's degree. Graduates of these programs would become statisticians or actuaries in different companies where they can enjoy a decent salary. Well, most of the time, a lot. In the business world, statistics has important uses in management, product planning, forecasting, quality control, and yearly report. Specifically, financial analysts used a variety of statistical information to guide their investment recommendations. In marketing, brand managers can review the electronic scanner statistics and the promotional activity statistics to gain a better understanding of the relationship between promotional activities and sales. In production, a quality analyst uses a variety of statistical quality control charts to monitor the output of a production process, while economists use a variety of statistical information to forecast about the future of the economy such as inflation rates. The statistical methods you use for these tasks come from one of the two branches of statistics, descriptive and inferential. Descriptive statistics is the method that you use to collect, summarize, present, and analyze a set of data. For instance, describing the allocation of your monthly allowance. Inferential statistics is the method that uses the data collected from a small group to draw conclusions about a larger group. By using this method, you can perform estimations, hypothesis testing, determining relationships among variables, and making predictions. So the main difference of the inferential from descriptive statistics is its ability to predict an outcome to a particular topic. Now let's try what we have learned so far. In each of the following articles, tell whether descriptive or inferential statistics have been used. You can pause the video if you want to think for a while. This is descriptive because this update only describes the data that has been collected from the Department of Health. There is no inference on the possible effects of this report on the economy and existing policies of the said province. This time it's inferential because this article contains projection about the possible narrowing of Singapore's 2020 GDP. Again, it's inferential. The claim on this article requires experimental studies that test the effectiveness of these dietary supplements on an actual group of people. So the results from this small group of individuals were inferred for a larger group using statistics. This one, yeah, I forgot to remove it. It's descriptive statistics, like the first example. Before we go any further, let's learn the basic concepts in statistics. 
Understanding statistical analysis will be difficult if we don't know these terms. The first is measurement. Measurement is the assignment of a number to something. So, if someone will ask about your monthly internet bill, you are using measurement if you are thinking of an amount to describe your bill. Same as with the following questions. Sometimes, it's difficult to measure qualities, but if you will set a certain criteria or scoring procedure, it's possible. For instance, how pretty is Liza? Well, not hard to measure, right? Variable is a characteristic of an item or individual. From the word itself, variables can assume different values. For example, alcohol brand, test scores, mobile legend ranking. If the description for the variable is too long, we can use symbols like letters. For example, let X be the name of the person who hurt you last week. Yeah, X is the variable. Data are the facts and figures collected, analyzed, and summarized for presentation and interpretation. So, if your variable is alcohol brand, the possible data are Green Rose, Hygiene, Nasino, and Alcominus. If your variable is ML ranking, the possible data are Warrior, Elite, Master, Grandmaster, and so on. Now, the collection of data values is called data set. Data can be classified as either qualitative or quantitative. This is very important because the statistical analysis appropriate for a particular variable depends upon whether the variable is qualitative or quantitative. The first type of data is called qualitative because these are values that can be placed into distinct categories according to some characteristic or attribute. It can consist of labels, category names, ratings, and rankings. Here are some of the examples of qualitative variables and data. Opinions, class at school, satisfaction rating. While quantitative values represent quantities, counts or measurements for which representation on a numerical scale is naturally meaningful, they usually come from measuring tools, such as typhoon wind speed, thermometer reading, and test duration. Take note that ID numbers are qualitative or categorical because they are just labels. They can be in a form of numbers but it's still a label so ID numbers and other identification numbers or barcodes are all under qualitative data. State whether each of the following variables is qualitative or quantitative. Annual sales is quantitative. T-shirt sizes like small, medium, and large are qualitative. Employee classification like permanent, part-time, probationary are qualitative. Earnings, again like the annual sales, are quantitative. Lastly, the method of payment like cash, check, and credit card are all qualitative. There are also two types of quantitative data, discrete and continuous. Discrete data are quantitative data that are countable using a finite count such as 0, 1, and 2. These are often integer valued. So 1.25 is not a discrete data because 1.25 is not an integer. For example, the number of Twitter followers you have is 98. So this is discrete. Why? Because it's impossible to have 98.5 Twitter followers, right? All that are not discrete are called continuous data. These are quantitative data that can take on any value within a range of values on a numerical scale, coming from numerical instruments or tools. Example, the length of your phone. It could be 5.32 inches. Now let's try these examples. Classify each variable as discrete or continuous. Number one, the number of words in a book. This is discrete. Monthly net income of an employee. It's not always an exact amount, so it's continuous. How about a person's age? This is continuous. Well, if someone will ask you about your age, you probably say 25, but it's not 25 years exactly, right? 
It could be 25 years, 2 months, 23 days, 23 hours. Yeah. Number four, the number of books on your shelves. It's discreet. How about the population in Tarlac City? It's also discreet because whenever we talk of people or persons, they are always counted as a whole, right? There's no 1.5 person. And that's all for this video. For the next part, we'll talk about levels of measurement, data collection, and sampling techniques. So subscribe and like and hit the notification bell for your updates. Thank you.